Trojan family, Trojan family, what's up, man? USCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, we got a couple items I want to talk about real quick. I want to address a couple things. One of them is the transfer portal, some changes that might be coming with the transfer portal. And then two, I want to do my breakout player of the year uh, as it relates to the offensive player. You guys know that I did one for the defense last week, uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I did Corey Foreman. That's my breakout player from the defensive side of the ball. But I got one for the offensive side of the ball, and I want to do this. And I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain. I'm going to state my case. I'm going to lay the foundation, uh, the reason I'm, that I'm picking this individual. And you guys are about to see it. Uh, and it's Relique Brown. I'm going to tell you guys why I'm picking Relique Brown. Uh, but before I do that, let's touch on this transfer portal thing real quick. They, they're getting ready to, um, to change, possibly change the transfer portal. Now, I, I think this is really, I think this is going to be the USC rule. That's what I'm going to call this, the USC ruling. The USC ruling is about to come down with the transfer portal. And as you guys know, we've hit the transfer portal like never before. We've gotten all these players through the transfer portal. Nobody has had more success um, and, and nobody's been impacted more through the transfer portal this year. I, I was it really ever. It's never been it. Never been in the history of college football where you've had transfer portal action going on like the University of Southern California. And I told you guys the other day, this is what Lincoln Riley meant when he said this is going to be the most unique roster that you've ever seen before. Now, coincidentally, now if you guys are connected with me on Instagram, it's USCJ32 on Instagram. I posted, I posted something, and it's Robert Griffin III. Robert Griffin III, I posted this on my Instagram. Him and uh, Desmond Howard were on uh, College Football Live the other day, and they were having a conversation about uh, which team, that I guess the most, I, I caught the tail end of it, but I caught the little clip, but I recorded it, and I put it on my Instagram but apparently they were having a conversation about which which team is basically the breakout team or or the most team uh, with the most improvement that that uh, for uh, for 2022. And uh, of course, Desmond Howard he picked Miami. He he picked Mario Cristobal. You know, my thing is this: everybody always goes with the with the unique flavor of the month, and that's what that's what you always see most of the time. Everybody want to go with the unique flavor of the month. Mario Cristobal, okay. That, that, that's the unique flavor. But if you really study your, your college football, if you really study what's been going on, like Robert Griffin III, Robert Griffin III said it best. He said, I'm picking USC. Desmond Howard, Desmond Howard's eyes kind of popped open. It looked like he was just uh, super surprised. And Robert Griffin III, he started naming out the players. Robert Griffin III, he did his homework like USCJ. I'll go through the roster and I told you guys all these players that we got. There's no way that you can, you can d ignore... Um, the fact that we got all these players and and, uh, and ignore the production that they have. And when Robert Griffin III, when he went through these numbers and when he went through the players, he caught, you could tell the man did his homework and he studied. He said, I'm picking USC. Basically, this is not verbatim. I'm picking USC to go all the way, to make it all the way. I'm picking them to be possible one of those surprise teams simply because of the fact that they, they hit the transfer portal and it's never been done like this before. Man, you guys hit me in the comment section. And so now we see today... We see this transfer portal rule possibly changing. And this is an article from FanNation.com. I actually seen this on 24-7 Sports as well. And it says this. It says the NCAA proposes changes to college football transfer portal. And we know that it's, this is, this is really, this is really uh, I, 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 in my opinion, because of the way USC did it, we've never seen it before. And if we make it all the way, you know they, they're going to continue to change. They're going to change this rule. And it's not going to be the same because it, it, you cannot... You cannot overturn a roster like this one year and go to the playoffs. That's probably what they're suggesting or thinking right now. But listen, so here it is right here. This is a brief part of the article. It says the NCAA is hoping to get ahead of the issue, recommending a proposed restriction that will limit transfer portal movement uh, to strictly defined time periods. Hold on. Let me go up because I missed part of Let's see where it's at. It says here, it says if passed, the rule would create transfer portal windows. This is the key word right here. Windows in college football. 45 days beginning the day of the following championship selection and 15 day period in the first two weeks of May at the end of spring practice, a total of 60 days. So listen, it says when the NCAA changed the rules around the college football transfer portal and created immediate eligibility, 
The result was a flurry of movement as then 2,000 players were switched switch schools last season. So so we know that there's been quite a bit of movement and and, and some are justified, uh, you know, and, and you know, and, and some, you know, uh, some kids want a fresh start, right? Some kids want a fresh start. We know that Caleb Williams, they, you know, he wanted to be with his coach. We know that Mario Williams wanted to be with his coach. And But nobody was impacted the way we were. But we know that because of, of the success that Lincoln Riley's had, and, and you guys know we had to do it like this. We overturned our roster. Quite a few players were let go. So we had to bring quite a few players to get, you know, <clears throat> quite a few players um, in. So if they decide to do away with it, I think we're good now. And I think, you know, I, I think the fact that, that we were able to have this much success will bring success in recruiting. So you guys hit me in the comment section. What do you guys think about these new windows that supposedly are supposed to come open? It's not going to be like the way it was because I think you got another um, window coming up, I think, in a, a, a next month, if I'm not mistaken, that you can transfer in the transfer portal. You guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. Like, share, subscribe. USCJ32 on Instagram. Make sure you guys check that clip out on my Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Uh, so now, let's get into this. You know, I have some time to reflect on this real quick. I have some time to reflect on my offensive player. And let me tell you what I did. What I did was I went back and watched Lincoln Riley's offense. I went back and I watched Shamar J.P. Ryan and, um, and Joe Mixon at the University of Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley. And I looked at, you man, Lincoln Riley has some dynamic offenses at, at uh, uh, the University of Oklahoma. And when I watched what he did with the running backs, I could not help but to think, this is going to be Raleigh Brown and possibly Travis Dye. You, you can interchange, you can change them out, and, and you can even put Austin Jones in there. Um, and, and I looked at the fact that he, he had two running backs in there at one time. You, what do you do with two running backs that can really catch the ball? Two running backs that can really, I mean, just, just I mean, you can run up the middle. And so you just think if you have, if you have Raleigh Brown in there in the backfield, if you have Travis Dye in the backfield, Travis Dye, he's not that big, but he can go up the middle. But then you can have Raleigh Brown flare out like he was doing with Joe Mixon and Shamar J. P. Ryan. And man, I'm telling you, with the with the space that creates, you know, that this offense creates. And then I also seen him run a four a four receiver set. And one of the receivers, it was the running back, flared out to uh, out there to be like a slot. And so you had these three receivers out there, but then you had the running back. And I could not help but to think that that was Raleigh Brown going off to the left or to the right in the slot. And creating space. Not only does he does he does he shoot out to the to the left or the right and, and to catch a quick flare. Those these offenses, he could he could uh, uh, run a little skinny post. And I mean, you could do so much with Relique Brown and everything that he does. Or or, or he could do a comeback. And, you know the reverses that he that that uh, from the slot uh, for the uh, slot position. You could come back and do a quick reverse and get the ball going around. I mean, Relique Brown is going to be my, I don't see how you're going to keep him off the field. His skill set is tailor-made for the Lincoln Riley offense. His skill set is tailor-made. I mean, the, the, everything that Relique Brown does, this is tailor-made for him. And I could not help when I watched Samaj P. Ryan and I watched Joe Mixon, everything that they did, I've even seen, I've, I've even seen him run up the backfield, uh, like look like a, tall, a, a, a fake toss sweep. And then, you know, the, the quarterback does play action and he runs up the sideline and catches the ball. I've seen them do some dynamic things with the two set running back in the backfield. And then uh, as well as him in the slot as a running back. Man, I'm telling you, Relic Brown is my breakout player of the year. And I'm sorry. I know you got, you know, the other day when I uh, mentioned the breakout player of the year, you guys, uh, you know, uh, I, I did it for the defensive. I, I don't think I specified that I was doing it for the defense, but I felt like. I felt like uh, Corey Foreman was the man, but I see a lot of people putting uh, Brandon Rice, and I agree with you. I love what Brandon Rice is going to do. I love what Kyron Ware Hudson is going to do. I think he's going to be a breakout player of the year as well as a receiver. But but and, and so 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 my thing is is that I, I know you guys wanted some of those guys, but listen, I had to. You guys hit me in the comment section. Tell me what you think. I had to put Relique Brown because what this offense brings and what this offense delivers. As it relates to these running backs, these running backs are a big part, a big part of this offense and how they come out the backfield. And it's just, it, it, you cannot cover two guys like that coming out the backfield. The receivers is one thing, but you have two running backs like P. Ryan and Mixon that, that have dual threat. I mean, it just makes it just absolutely, 
I mean, you, the defense is going to be confused. Listen, we, we're going to put up more points than anybody in the country this year. I'm saying it right now. USCJ is going to tell you this right now. Hands down. We're putting up more points than anybody in the country. You're hearing it from me first. You guys hit me in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Am I right or wrong about Relique Brown? What's your opinion on this? Hit me in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Have a blessed day, man. Make sure you get out, get out, and make it happen today. Look, fight on, fight on, fight on.